Hi, I'm Nigel Long, and my last meal would be kaya toast, soft boiled eggs, chili pan mee, and kopi si kosong. Peking duck and fried rice with pu'er tea, bangkone silk handkerchief pasta, blowtorch otoro, kimchi jjigae, and kubota manju sake. And indomie with a sunny side up egg, boba milk tea, and a bowl of bobur cha cha. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today we're joined by stand-up comedian, fried rice connoisseur, everybody's favorite fictional uncle and Jamie Oliver's worst nightmare, Nigel Ung, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, thank you, Josh. Of Good course, to see man. you. Thanks for asking me to do a podcast. This is not a podcast, <laughs> for the record, but if we uploaded it to podcast, would you listen to it? Because that's extra money right there. Yeah, it's a podcast with extra steps, you know? <laughs> Just because you cook some food. No, I, right? Listen, man, you are preaching the choir right yeah. here. Um, have you ever thought about your last meal before? Because you have maybe the biggest, most intricate last meal I've ever seen, and I am oh, really? incredibly excited to eat it. No, you got like rappers asking for caviar, you think it's mine is enough, hard, it's fair enough. right? Mine is easy, right? Mine is uh, stuff you get every day when I was growing up in Malaysia. Yeah, so I haven't really thought about it before, no. Well, have, do you think about death a lot? No, not, not really. Why not? It's the one thing that we all like yeah. to really share. Nigel, we're gonna get there eventually. It's okay. gonna happen to you, it's gonna happen to me. Yeah, I know, I know. But you know, it's, it's like, I'm too busy. For death, right? That's why you listen to music. I don't think when death you're... thinks that, you know? Yeah, we'll cross the bridge when we get there, right? There's no use thinking about it. You obviously have a huge connection to food, and I feel like whenever anybody asks you if you're a foodie, you answer with, well, I'm Asian, of course. Yeah. What is yeah. it uniquely about Asian culture that is so tied to food that, say, like a white American person couldn't get? One of the most important things is food in Asia, if you eat out, it's really cheap. Mm. It, it can be expensive, of course. You have your fine dining and all that fancy restaurant stuff, but you also have your street food. And every every mom has takes pride in their cooking. Every mom has like a secret recipe. I think pride, is, is, is the main thing that's driving this food culture forward, right? Mm. I think in, in the Western world, nobody's proud of the, the, how they made a PB&J. Nobody's going around thinking, oh, my mom has this perfect PB&J recipe. No, you know? her ratio is the best. I'm just saying, it's one part peanut butter to one part sadness and <laughs> a little bit of neglect sprinkled on Well, in, in, in over here in, in this country, you're so lazy, you even, you even have peanut butter that has uh, that already has jelly in it. That was right? a low, that was a low point for American culture. I'll give you that one. That was truly where we were like we've given up. I have to say I do like your convenience though. You know, <laughs> thing, things just work over here. You, you know, you I, I just moved into a new place. There's a sink. There's a there's a trash. What do you call it? Garbage disposal. Uh -huh. I've never I've never used that before. <laughs> I love yeah. that man. You ready to eat? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I forgot we're gonna eat. Yeah, let's, let's oh, do it. We're let's eating do it. so much, brother. If death doesn't come for you after this meal, I don't know when it's coming for you because we're about to survive some stuff. All right, Nigel, for your first course, we have the kaya toast with homemade milk bread. We got the soft boiled egg in there. We have the coconut jam and the pandan jam. And then we have the kopi si kosong. Then we have the chili pan mi that is tossed with a homemade sambal tarasi with the pork and shiitake mushrooms, uh, poached egg, and fried anchovies, more sambal on top. Whew! Nice. How did we do, sir? You How memorized did we do? the whole thing. We're trying. Wow, 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 wow. Love it. And you guys did your homework. This is uh, impressive considering you made this at home. Thank you. Well, it's really interesting because yeah. we as like Americans, even in a big metropolitan city like LA, we don't get exposed to that much Malaysian food mm -hmm. at all. If anything, I mean, there's a ton of Thai food, uh, Vietnamese food, even a big Cambodian community down Long Beach. Yeah. But Malaysia specifically, like I have never had this dish. I've had kaya toast a couple times. But this is really new for me, so I'm stoked on it. Yeah, I think there's only one or two Malaysian restaurants in the whole LA metropolitan metropolitan area. You so. gotta start the third. It's, it's a lot of work, man. Yeah, like, no, I don't wanna do that, don't do that, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's Yeah, uh, dig let's in, man, tell, tell me about the kaya toast. I mean, this is like a really popular breakfast yeah, in Malaysia, right? Popular br Malaysian breakfast dish is like soft, you call it what, sweet bread, honey bread? Yeah, we got a milk bread. Milk bread, yeah, okay. Yeah. We don't really know what type of bread it is in Malaysia. Just we just go there and, and the, the hawker has it, you know, at the, at the little hawker stall where they sell mm -hmm. this, they have it, we just eat it. It's like a sweet bread, very spongy, nice. Kaya is like a beautiful coconut jam. Do you dip it in the egg or you just eat it straight up? I can, but I wanna, I wanna see mm -hmm. what you guys have Hey, done cheers, here. man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, it's pretty good. Physical Damn. kitchen team. That's good. That was, Lily made the bread, man. She crushed it. I'll put a little bit more kaya on it, personally. Mm. Maybe even some butter, too. This is like a, you call it a half boiled egg. It's supposed to be completely liquid. Mm. It's supposed to be completely opaque, but completely liquid. Oh, interesting. You know? And then you just stir it around. So it's a, a tad overcooked, but I'm not gonna complain, you know? <laughs> Listen. My uncle will, but not me. 
I think you being from Malaysia, which is a culture that I don't think a lot of Americans, especially white Americans, mm -hmm. are too privy to, I think that really affects how you are digested online. Mm. Because you've gotten a lot of criticism for your humor trafficking and Asian stereotypes, right? Mm -hmm. Which I find fascinating because where you grew up, presumably, most people were Malaysian in Malaysia. No. Yeah. Right? And then you came to different countries where you were a minority as an Asian person, how, is, how have you like experienced your own Asianism differently based on where you've lived? I think over here, sometimes people, uh, maybe they get a little more easily triggered when they mm -hmm. hear an Asian accent, they think, oh shit, next thing is gonna be stereoty stereotype, it's gonna sure. put us down. But I view Uncle Roger as a way to lift our culture up, you know, uh, humorously calling out people who mess up Asian food, Yeah. right? Plus, uh, as some, like you said, I'm, I'm from, Asia, I'm from Malaysia. I grew yeah, up- this isn't a bit, this is, yeah, this, this is, is this, it, man. This is me, this, Uncle Roger's accent is very similar to, very close to how I used to speak mm -hmm. growing up before moving to the Western world. I lived, uh, I was born and raised in Malaysia, lived there for 20 years. So the, Uncle Roger's accent is how I used to sound before moving to the Western world. Now my English, you can still hear traces of Asian-ness in it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a, a little bit more westernized now and more mm -hmm. neutral. I also lived in London for a while, so it's all a, a mishmash of, of everything. So tell me about the kopi si kosong, because I know like coffee culture is really big in Malaysia, right? The, the beans we use are different. In the mm -hmm. Western coffee shop, you use uh, Arabica mm -hmm. and yeah, Robusta. Yeah. Mm. I think the one that's more common here is Arabica, and then we use the other one, Robusta, which is harsher, more bitter, stronger. And I think this this is, I think so. I mean, you might be tricking me, but it, it tastes like the-, the We Asian got this coffee. imported straight from Malaysia, man. This is- Perfect, perfect. That's why it's like, um, Strong and usually people drink it with like sometimes condensed milk. I like evaporated milk. Mm. Uh, kopi C si, kosong. Kopi means coffee. C si means uh, milk. Kosong means no sugar. Gotcha, so gotcha. In, in the name itself, it tells you how to make it. <laughs> Dig into the chili pan, me man. This is a yes. dish that I've never had, but it looks fan freaking fantastic. Uh, Tell me about uh, when you used to eat this in Malaysia. Ah oh, man, this is like usually the first dish I get every time I just land in Malaysia. There's a place in Malaysia called Kin Kin Pan Mi. It's mm. in the city center. They have multiple branches now, but the one in the city center is the, the first one and the best one, I think. Uh, pan Mi is just like, every Asian culture has some sort of uh, stir-fried noodle with a, a sauce on it, and mm. this is our version. Uh, Great. Yeah, let's, let's, do you, do you toss it all together? Do you like eat? Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. But you know, in the interest of time, <laughs> let's, just, let's just dig in. Um, the, oh, sambal, the sambal tarasi is, is homemade and it is spicy as hell, so. Oh man, nice. You recreated the flavor. Mm-hmm. You good with spice? I am generally really good with spice. As I started going to the gym more and more and the spice started hurting me more and more when I would have to get up the Stairmaster and go to the bathroom. Tell me more about the Stairmaster. It just gets everything inside moving because you're going back and forth. You're sort of churning the butter inside there and then the butter has to come out and then you're there at the public gym bathroom. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I've stopped eating spicy food as much, uh, but I think I still can really handle my stuff. People take the worst shits. Uh huh. At gym bathrooms, man. The cheaper the gym, the worse the shits. You go to Equinox, at least they eat salads mm -hmm. sometimes. That's and it's fair like enough. Well, nice shits, eat nice Equinox shits. No, no, but at Equinox, they're eating weird stuff. They're getting like the collagen prebiotic smoothies, and that creates weird stuff. It's like a violent mm. pink hue, and it smells like Hailey Bieber. I'm curious about other comedians who, I'm thinking of people like Gabriel Iglesias, right? Mm -hmm. Who, you know, he puts on a Mexican accent much deeper than his native one. Mm -hmm. um, but he obviously has a, a very deep love for his culture and he's become one of the most famous comedians. Do you think as an Asian person, you get called out more for that? Do you think there's like some sort of unique spotlight on you being an Asian comedian and doing an accent? Comedians from every culture do accents, mm -hmm. right? Sebastian Maniscalco does an accent. Um, Gabriel Iglesias does an accent, but mm -hmm. when, when a Hispanic person does an accent, Usually it's celebrated. Other Hispanic people love that. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're like, holy shit, you remind me of my mom. Mm -hmm. But I think I do empathize with Asian Americans here. I think growing up, uh, the people of my age, Asian Americans my age, when they grew up, maybe uh, they got bullied more in school. It's still considered mm -hmm. okay to bully Asians, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. But black comedians do they, they, their parents' voice, or they, you know, uh, if they're from Nigeria, they do a Nigerian accent. Yeah, yeah. Right? So um, I think it's something people maybe get sensitive because of their life experience. So I, I, I get it, I empathize with you guys, but I guess you, you also have to empathize with me, right? That, that, that is how I grew up. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think uh, my one wish for people in the world is that they just saw it as more complex than they do. Mm -hmm. In general, right, people have this idea of like, even you as like an Asian person, right? It's like you are from 
Malaysia, which is a predominantly Muslim country, mm-hmm. right? Which, and you're ethnically Chinese, right? Mm-hmm. And so you are sort of like a minority. There's just, there's so many layers to all this stuff. Yeah. I'm curious who the people are that generally criticize you. Do you see a pattern there? Are they Asian Americans? Are they white people? Usually Western Asians, mm. you know, Asian Americans uh, being, being partially that. But I have, I have to say most people do enjoy what I do. Most people, <laughs> thankfully, you know. I think it's a very... Uh, Nigel, everyone <laughs> hates you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Hey, is Nigel back from the bathroom yet? You said he only needed like two minutes. Hello, hello, nephew Josh. <laughs> How you doing? Uncle Roger, welcome to the yeah, meal, buddy. We don't need Nigel. They don't need nephew Nigel anymore. Who care about him? He don't know anything about food. Let Uncle Roger teach you what you make for me. Fuyo, this look good. <laughs> Thank you, coming from you, that's a huge compliment. So we have made you, of course, egg fried rice. We actually use your recipe. This is day old jasmine rice that was cooked in stock left to dehydrate, and then actually fried in pork fat, of course, in a wok mm. on live fire to get that beautiful wok hay in there. You have wok here? We actually do, yeah. With this white people's studio, you got wok? We even have, have a rice cooker, if you there. can believe see? it. See, yeah. Hi, uh... And then we have the Peking duck. Now, we didn't make the Peking duck ourselves with the bing with all of the accoutrements, so please dig in, let me know what you think. Okay, okay, try the egg fire rice first. This is a big nice. moment. I don't. Okay, we saved that for last. No, no, no. Th- I moment. think you should do it now. Get it out of the way, cause I'm a little scared. Okay, okay. Be did honest. you cook this? No, my my team did. The uh, team did. Hi. Uh, he just the face for this show. <laughs> Come on, what is this? Pretty. I'm kidding. I have terribly low self esteem. Mm, not bad. Not bad. Good. Nice. Is it a little too much soy? No, no, no. No. Good. Nice color. Mm-hmm. Very dark and nice. Enough soy sauce. Uncle Roger can taste the MSG in there mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. This is the good stuff. This is the Ajinomoto brand too. Mm. This is that thick crystal MSG. For but you. I am curious about how MSG in America, especially you go into any Asian restaurant, especially 10 years ago, signs that say no MSG. MSG really became like a symbol for anti-Asian racism in America. Why is it so important to you to promote MSG? Because you guys hate flavor. I'm <laughs> so do. depressed. So I have to take matter into my own hand and try to change the world. I think you have honestly done a great PR job. I'm glad you're getting MSG money, but... That's the problem. When everybody in America, you guys don't have eating out too expensive. So everybody cook at home. Mm. But if you cook at home, who you learn from? Your mom, your dad. They not chef. Stop listening to them. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> Can I pour you up some pu'er tea? Yeah, please, please. Tell me about the pu'er tea and what this means to you. Everybody drink pu'er tea. You know pu'er tea, the best tea. Mm. Not too heavy, not too light. Nice flavor. It's got a beautiful earthy roastiness to it that I absolutely love. Mmm, Uncle Roger like this analysis. <laughs> In Asia, we just drink tea because the tea there. Best way to learn cooking with feeling is to date Asian woman, you know? They mm. teach you. Yeah? Have well, you got a girlfriend, nephew Josh? I, I have a I have a fiance, yeah. She's Fiance. She's, she's not Asian. She she's a, a white Jew and her mom is a great cook. So she is a really good cook. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't go to Thanksgiving at her place. <laughs> no, I cook. I cook all the Thanksgiving. Good, good, good. Please d- dig into the Peking duck. Why is Peking duck mm. one of your favorite things? Peking duck is simple of the best Chinese food. It actually you need to use feeling, but you also need technical also. Mm. You know? Okay, nice. Let's see. The Peking duck skin should be nice and crispy. But this one, you thaw dash this, this sitting in back of some guy's motorbike for half an hour, it's mm-hmm. not gonna be crispy. I think it was actually the back of a Prius. Prius. <laughs> we tried. It's still okay. It's still okay. Um, what do you think about your nephew Nigel not being allowed potentially into China? Oh, Uncle Roger not allowed that also, so yeah. we, we together. <laughs> He's a nephew, if you don't know, Uncle Roger has stand-up show. And in stand-up show, I make some joke. I joke about Taiwan, I joke about China. And that they're not happy. Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes uh, uh, communist parties tend to lack humor occasionally. Yeah, correct, correct. Mm-hmm. See, isn't it nice to be white? Yeah, I can just say that. Listen, no problem. Any country let you in? Pretty you much, joke about man. North Korea? North Korea still let you in? I think they would. Honestly, they might want the cultural ambassador. Um, why is it so important to you to call out, especially white chefs who make terrible renditions of Asian food? Because it's funny. It is funny though. It is funny. You played that Weijo in front of any Asian parent, any mm. a- old Asian uncle or auntie, they're gonna have same reaction. Uncle Roger just package it up nicely into YouTube video, mm. you know? The BBC is one of the biggest, best journalistic organizations in the world, and they couldn't get it right that you don't put olive oil 
in Southeast Asian food, olives famously, a fruit that does not grow there. You're absolutely correct. I think there's a lot of very deep salient points on top of the fact that it's very funny and relatable. So just know that I absolutely love what you do. Um, thank you, thank you. Even, even if I didn't make the picking duck myself. Uncle Roger, wish I could say it the same. <laughs> Nigel, you're back from the bathroom. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, what happened? What happened? I don't know, your uncle's kind of a dick. I like him oh. though, he's funny. He's funny. Yeah, now you know what I deal with every day. You know, I got the trauma. <laughs> but good thing. Everybody takes therapy here, so I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> All right, man, for your third course, we have right. kimchi chige with a little side of white rice. We have the blowtorch otoro nigiri. We have the silk handkerchief pasta from Bancones in London with the confit egg yolk on there. <sighs> Dang, that's good. And then the kabuta manu. Sake, this sir is a feast. Yeah, it's very Asian, plus pasta. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. This is all the stuff that uh, I think showcases all the global things I like. Mm -hmm. um, everything has a little bit of a story. This uh, kimchi jjigae, of course, we just moved to LA. K Town mm -hmm. is like one of my favorite places to mm -hmm. go eat. Um, Blow Torch Otoro. Um, there's this little Japanese. Uh, tiny little izakaya sushi bar in London. And when I first stumbled upon it, I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I looked at the Google reviews, it's only three stars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, then you know it's gonna be good. People are complaining how rude the, the, mm -hmm. the, the chef is, how annoying he is, and how many rules there are for eating his sushi. He gets mm -hmm. mad if you use chopsticks. You need to use your hands and, and don't, don't mess with it. Don't ask for soy sauce, he, he will hate you. So when I first discovered this place, oh yeah. <laughs> It's okay, we're only in Mythical Kitchen <laughs> at that London place. But uh, I remember when I, I discovered this place when I was still like a struggling comedian mm. and I could only afford like the, his three-piece sushi set. So I would <laughs> go there, get three pieces of nigiri and then go to McDonald's afterwards. I love that. And then slowly, slowly I could afford five pieces and seven pieces and now I can afford a full meal now, you know? That's <laughs> incredible. That's such a good way to track your success. Yeah, all right, let's start with uh, the kimchi jjigae Yeah, first. so we actually got this from uh, Youngji Kamjatang. Ah, which, I love uh, that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good, it's you, good. You ever go to the uh, karaoke bar next door? Yangji Gamjatan. I've been to a few karaoke bars in LA. I don't know which one that well, is. Well, if you go there, if you can see, if you can get my lifetime ban nullified, because it was a misunderstanding. Why were you banned there? Well, technically it was me what and like happened? 12 friends. Um, mm -hmm. I walk in, I was, you know, outside hanging out, and then I walk in, we have a private room, and we have like three bottles of liquor going around. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I can't believe my friends sprung for bottle service. Turns out they went to the liquor store, pocketed mm. them and snuck them in. And then, yeah, yeah, they started yelling at us. And then my buddy Daesong had to, you know, just try and explain in Korean, like, hey, please don't call the police on us. And then conditionally, we left uh, under the terms that we would never again return, so. How would they know? You didn't have your pictures like printed out? No way, man, but hey, it's just scary enough and I'm fine going to Kamjatang and just eating delicious Korean soups. Mm, it's good, it's good. Um, can, I, can I pour you up some sake? Yeah, yeah, yes, please. Thank you, Kubota Manju, my favorite sake. Um, they have a, Kubota has a bar in Tokyo, in the middle mm. of Tokyo, in uh, Shibuya, in the mm. un underground of a mall, and I just love their sake, you know? Yeah. Hey, cheers, yeah, man. Cheers, Kanpai. cheers. Kanpai. Mmm, it's mm. good, right? That's a subtle Wait, that's sweetness. actually really freaking good, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know my shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> no one was doubting it, brother. No one was doubting it. I just used this video, uh, this podcast, as an opportunity to get all the things I like for free. Yeah, this is... I like how your sushi is square, your nigiri is square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we cut it ourselves. Nice, nice. Mmm. So this is like represents Nigel leaving Malaysia, going to the great wide world. These are your big travels, right? You said that Uncle Roger's somewhat based off what you basically would have ended up as if you stayed in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I want you to walk me through a day in the life of Nigel Ung if you'd stayed in Malaysia. What would you be doing now? I grew up, you know, not without a lot of money, you know, so my parents would just, in Asia, if you grew, grew up in that, like maybe lower middle class, mm -hmm. they just want their kids to go to a good school, get good degrees, uh, go to university, then get graduate, get a nice white collar job, sure. and work there. And I think that would probably be the route I would take if I were in Malaysia, uh, uh, you know, stable, decently paid, maybe tech job. And mm. then maybe on the side, I would have some sort of cr slightly creative hobby, probably photography, you know? It seems to be a very Asian thing too. You sure, but are you into photography or you just think you would have been into photography? And well, I had a phase. How are you trading in your money? Also, eat the, eat the pasta, oh, eat yes, the pasta. pasta. What's it, the point of life with cold pasta? This uh, Bancone is the name of a restaurant in London. And unfortunately, it's pretty much impossible to get in because everything in Europe is like 15 seats, mm. you know? And then sometimes, there was one time I tried to go there, no reservation on a Friday. 
I was like, oh, can I have a table for four? And then the, the front of house person just laughed at me. <laughs> Hey man, you just talked about how rude restaurant owners get, you know, bad reviews, which how you know the pasta's good. So apparently That's true. they know what they're doing over there. You said that it was always your like dad's desire for you to just get a stable white collar job and you were on that track, right? You, you mm-hmm. were a data scientist for a while. Yeah, I was doing Monday to Friday. I had a full time job, nine to five, Monday to Friday, six PM. I take a train all the way in in the UK trains are you can take trains everywhere. Do my do my show, two hours away, two hour train back, go to bed at one AM, wake up at seven AM, repeat. Every day. Did you tell your parents that you were doing that, that that was a prospective career plan, or did you keep that hidden for a little bit? I told them, I was like, well, I'm doing this part time, mm-hmm. and it seems to be going okay. You know, I've got an agent and everything, so I might go full time soon. And then I went full time stand up September 2019. So six months before COVID hit and closed everything. That's that boo boo music creeping yeah, up on The yeah. jaws, COVID was <laughs> the jaws in that situation. So I had maybe 10 months worth of savings left. And I told myself, let's give this social media thing a shot. Got very lucky. So thank you to everyone who, with, uh, for your support so far. The video is not finished yet, so don't click off. Don't you dare right? click yeah. off. Where are they? Don't you click off. We need yeah. that watch time. We need that AVD. We need that retention. I think I think uh, people who watch YouTube a lot will be like, oh, thank you for watching. And, oh yeah, the video's finished. Click it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know the tricks, bro. I know the tricks. All right, Nigel, for your final course, we have Indomie, the king of instant noodles with a fried egg on top. We have bubur cha cha, mm-hmm. and then we have the boba milk tea. Yeah, classic. This is a late, late night food in Malaysia. So Indomie, oh, we have those 24 hour hawkers. You just go there. Uh, Indomie, man, it's just great instant noodles. I, mm-hmm. I, it's my favorite because they use the most MSG in there, you know, most instant noodles. And oil, packets. it comes with the uh, yeah. the packet of oil too. Three, three compartments of oils, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, it's just great. Love it, Indonesian brand. Oh good job, God. guys, you guys know what you're doing. Mmm, <laughs> that's good, man. That's, that's good. Listen, I might sprinkle a bit of spring onion when I cook it myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the bubur cha cha, because this is something I've never had before. No, uh, it's a dessert. I love it. I've only had it in Malaysia, maybe Singapore, never had it anywhere else. Wow. Uh, it's tapioca pearls, coconut milk, sweet mm. potato, yam, and anything else. A, a lot of different things you can add in there. Yeah, we added some banana in there. We, we made this all from scratch. Banana. So we, said we can't find wow. it. Listen, we, all we can do is Google and do our best. Hey, not bad. You got the flavors pretty close. Pretty close. Um, I'm curious, do you ever have anxiety that Uncle Roger is going to be more famous than Nigel Ung? Or to you, is it all one team, one dream. Good thing they both share the same bank account. You know? <laughs> I don't really have that fear. I think it is my creation. And let, 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 let's, be, let's be honest here. If you watch someone review a co- cooking video online, he is more entertaining. He's just a wacky, cartoony character. Mm-hmm. Can he sustain like an hour long comedy show? Probably not. But like a, I did a 20, 20 minute set with Uncle Roger on my tour. Uncle Roger does 20, 25 minutes, and then I come out and do an hour. So Uncle Roger opens for me. But he is ultimately a more entertaining and a better YouTube character. So yeah, of course now, if I put out a video where it's just myself, they'll get less views because Uncle Roger is just more entertaining. Mm-hmm. But um, me as a creative myself, I have other projects where I play d- different uh, roles, maybe not characters, but more like, like my stand-up, and I'm uh, movie ideas, TV ideas, where I'm playing different characters and acting. Um, so as a creative myself, I, I, I don't have that worry. If you extrapolate that for long enough, it's like, well, why would anybody watch anything that isn't Uncle Roger, right? Yeah. Right. Like YouTube is such an extreme platform. I know you've been on the end of that multiple times. Do you ever worry about if YouTube is the main thing or, or are you fully fine just branching out creatively? Uh, yeah, it's similar things over and over again, but there's also s- some growth there. Sure. Uh, the characters evolving a little bit, drawing out a backstory. He's collabing with more more chefs. Mm-hmm. He's reviewing different types of dishes, you know. At the very extreme, I could still just be making egg fried rice videos oh, yeah. every week, right? But 100%. the fact that I, I branch it out more. Yes, I probably will still keep that channel, mainly Uncle Roger stuff, mm. but maybe one day I might decide to give uh, vlog channels a try or something and just go on as, as myself. Is there any difference in the way that you've seen death treated, say, in America versus in Malaysia, especially? They believe in the afterlife more in, in Asia. Mm-hmm. Everybody has ghost stories and we have a reverence to ghosts, you know? When you go hiking in the wilderness, in the jungle, people tell you there, don't pee uh, behind a tree, you might anger some spirits. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I believe that, you know? That's why people pee, pee, uh, pee all over the place. It's, it's cleaner back in Asia because <laughs> they're not allowed to. They're worried like some ghoul will haunt them. 
we, I think we believe more in the afterlife. We have maybe more um, unusual traditions around it. Like we'll burn things that, that like say we will burn like a paper effigy of an iPhone because we think the, the uh, our ancestors will get it in heaven or in hell. They will burn it to send it to them. Nice, nice. Um, so people will burn like paper cars, paper iPhones, paper money, clothes, you know, yeah. iPods, everything. Do you think any of those rituals surrounding death gave you any solace about it? Do you think it made you feel better? Or do you just try and stay busy enough to ignore it and not come on podcasts like this where we uh, yeah. talk about it? I think I just stay busy enough to ignore it and uh, do cardio twice a week. And I'm like, yep, that's time to staff death off for like <laughs> half an hour. Now you're ready to get in the lightning round? Let's do it, man. It's not like I have a choice, do I? No, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. The contract, we actually have a bodyguard at the door. Uh, other than me, who's the one person dead or alive you'd actually want to share your last meal with? It would be cool to have a meal with Anthony Bourdain. Mm. I think he would be a fan of my little project. Yeah. Because he it, it, likes traveling to Asia. He has such reverence for our food and our culture. And he has a sense of humor. So if mm. I, I think if I roasted him, he would he would like it. And now I would like to review an Anthony Bourdain video, but now, then it's, now it has to be like a complimentary, like a complimentary, a positive video, right? You can't roast a dead person. I feel like he'd want you to. Yeah, I know. Which is better, Cambodian or Laotian food? <laughs> so it's an inside joke. I, I, I was canceled, canceled by Cambodia and Laos because I made a joke about how they're both worst, ver worst versions of Thai food. So I did a video with a Lao chef and the food was uh, pretty good. So now it's up to you guys, Cambodia. Let's let's collab. Send one of your Cambodian chefs over and prove prove to the world that your food is as good as Lao food. Cambodia, call out. Yeah. What song do you want to be playing at your funeral? You know that 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 song, uh, the one of the recent Taylor Swift songs. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. That yeah. one. <laughs> That's a good song to play at your funeral. Uh, what's your biggest fear? I worry that this will all go away. You know, you work so hard to do entertainment as your living. That's been the whole dream, right? And I'm I'm living it right now, which is great. But in entertainment, nothing's guaranteed, mm. right? You, I just worry it will all go away. Some pe people might just stop, decide to stop watching my videos tomorrow. Would you rather only eat Jamie Oliver's fried rice for the rest of your life, or only wear an orange polo for the rest of your life? <laughs> only wear an orange polo. That's fine. <laughs> people love me in the orange polo. <laughs> Easy question. Next. What's your greatest regret? I think in my previous, uh, you know, when I was doing stand-up, I, I was working so hard, I think I neglected a lot of my personal relationships, mm -hmm. both like uh, my old marriage, uh, my, my, you know, that le led to the divorce, and also my friendships, you know. I, mm -hmm. I live abroad, and a lot of my Malaysian friends, my high school friends, my college friends are in Malaysia now, and I miss all their weddings, their, their, their kids getting born, birthed, and, and all that stuff. Uh, I wish there was a way for me to balance the two a little bit more. Mm. All of Nigel's high school friends in Malaysia, call him. Call him, it's never too late. Yeah, but then I don't reply to their texts, yeah, so yeah, it's kind of on me yeah, too. Know. It's messed <laughs> up, you know? You are the problem, it's you. Yeah. Uh, finally, are you happy? Yes, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Nigel, man, I really appreciate you. This is an awesome meal. If you want to deliver your last words to the camera right there. Yes, eat better food, be happy. God, that's great. Oh, I love it's that. simple, you know? Nigel, truer words have never been spoken. Look right at that camera right there and tell the people where they can find you and anything you want to promote. So my special, the one that I got banned from China for, uh, the Haya special is now live on Veeps. Uh, Veeps is a live streaming platform where you can put on your live shows for a limited amount of time. So go check that out. We include links in the description. And go check out my YouTube channel. Nigel, you're an incredible man. Please, if you see your uncle, tell him uh, that I thank him very much. But again, found him just churlish and rude. <sighs> I'll let him know. Face the reality of mortality head on with our new Last Meals hat and tea. Available now at mythical.com.